absolutely impressed with um, what you've been doing. So it is um, great. Um, it is great to be with you. Um, and I've been trying to hook up with as many TAFEs as possible in recent times, just to check in on them and to thank them. Um, for the tireless work that everyone has been putting in. Of course, it's the leadership team of the TAFEs, but it's also the maintenance staff, the cleaners, the teachers, the trainers, the admin support, the student coordinators, like everyone has just gone absolutely beyond anyone's expectation in making sure that we are holding the TAFE and the TAFE system together during this pandemic so that we've got a TAFE system that is ready to take on that extra responsibility of training people to work us through the economic recovery. So um, again, I would like to highlight the work that Melbourne Poly has done and the great work that you've been able to do to get to keep the retention rates um, pretty high in what has been um, difficult times, as well as also um, dealing with um, lots of different student groupings that aren't naturally um, find it easy to enrol in courses and move on into jobs. I think you've done an extraordinary job and I just want to call that out. But I do want to um, know more about how you have adapted to remote learning um, during this really challenging time when we get a chance to talk a little bit um, further on. Um, I also just want to call out the fact that it's not just dealing with the pandemic, it's been um, that ability for TAFE to be so agile that you've been able to pivot not once, but many times as circumstances have changed um, during the experiences that we've um, all gone through. And you've done it so swiftly, you've done it effectively, and you've done it with um, a degree of, of passion that um, I think really does warm my heart, knowing that it's not just, you know, um, the provision of training, it's that tightness that we see there and the knitting together of community industry and of course, caring for students. So again, um, thank you um, so much. Um, in terms of the uh, metal, metal project, the hand metal project, um, I did not know about this until I read the brief. And what an amazing initiative. And it came through from metal workers students in Spain, as I understand it. And it's designed to essentially um, make recognition of those in the front line of the pandemic. And um, it, it is the opportunity for people to use their creative um, juices um, and, their, and their hand skills to develop something that is incredibly important, but will be, um, uh, will be there for the, the long haul. And what really took me was this quote, and I think it, it's attributed to Mary Hackett and Lindley Traeger. And they said, apart from many other things, and I quote, it's also been a remarkably poignant way to remind students how jewellery and object makers can be involved in creating symbolic objects that become markers of significant moments in time and in turn play a role in the social structure. And look, I just thought that was such an anchoring comment and one that's so directful um, and a great message um, for students and the wider community to take on board about the importance of creative arts. It's not creative arts that is just over there and isolated from other things in the community. It is a true expression of what is going on at any given time in our history. So um, I think it's just fantastic that you did take up um, the uh, interests of others and have uh, joined in on what is a global project and one that um, I think also connects the world up in a, just another way, in a very creative way. So again, thank you for all of that. And as Nina touched on, I'm really interested, I've heard about these auctions. I'm really interested to find out more about, about all of this. We might get the, the parliamentary precinct um, aware of this a little bit more, Nina, um, because it is, it's a great opportunity um, to expose the great artistic talents of students that we have. 
um, right through our taste, but particularly at Melbourne Poly. And I'm sure with those sorts of great endeavours, Polys are always interested in, in tapping in and hopefully we might be able to get their wallets a little bit opened up a little bit, Francis. So let's, let's join up and see what we can do in that respect. And of course, all of the proceeds go to an amazing, brilliant cause. So uh, that's an, ac an extra bonus in terms of making sure we can get as many people uh, involved in it. So today, again, thank you for coming together. Thank you for having uh, Nina and myself um, with you. We really don't want to take up any more time. We just really want to hear from Andrew, the teachers and the students, so that we've got a, a even much greater understanding of what you do so that when we have interactions with decision makers and other MPs and other community leaders, we can pass on the great work that Melbourne Poly is doing in the creative arts industry. Thank you. Keep safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, and thank you for your continuing support. I'm not going to dare say anything more at this point, and I'm just going to hand over to Andrew. So, Andrew, take take the stage, please. Sorry for jumping in there. Sorry about that. I was going off time <laughs> rather than the running sheet, so my humble apologies. And and um, I really echo what Gail said about about you know the importance of arts because arts has been downplayed and at a time like now it's so important to celebrate the things that are critical to us you know and and uh, i was really buoyed by the statement on sunday about keeping the venues alive too yeah. that's such a wonderful thing in fact i think the whole um, leadership of the our victorian government's been excellent and we're the only people to quell the second wave in the whole of the world so thank you um, I'll just quickly briefly go through the courses we have, just so in case, just to know the suite of courses we have at Pran. So we run theatre arts programs. So they've been really challenged because mainly all their delivery is generally um, just face to face, but they've done some really innovative things. Um, so for their live production, they've a lot of technology kind of items. They've brought home, made videos, and then offered it over uh, Zoom. Um, and they've changed all their delivery so that um, they can maximise the face-to-face -face delivery once we're allowed back. And they'll, they'll also deliver into January and February to get everyone finished for the year. So just incredible commitment by those staff. And hopefully we'll be able to run some really scaled back productions where they'll be live streamed rather than, uh, than you know, a live audience like this. Um, there's a makeup course, um, so you know they've been challenged as well. But uh, we've got face shields and masks for them, socially distanced once we're allowed to come back, to make sure it's safe, like other um, beauty uh, um, uh, areas, you know, industry. Um, and they work a lot with uh, different uh, malt house, uh, Australian Opera, uh, a lot of other little companies. Uh, we also have costume as well. So they work with NICA. Uh, the other people work with NICA too. Um, Malthouse, Australian Opera uh, and uh, Victorian Opera. Um, uh, there's a kind of a thing. So what happened to get around the problem of cutting fabric and everything, they sent off packages of fabric to everyone so they could uh, continue. Uh, music, we run music here too. Um, so uh, I really like the, the way where, where the you know, as, as said by the minister, we are the capital of live music in the world. More music venues per capita than any other place in the world. We're well and truly aware of it. And that's what we're trying to get our students to be able to do in a variety of performance uh, um, uh, genres and uh, different groupings. Um, we run a glass course as well, uh, which was part of a What If grant. Uh, so that's design glass as opposed to just normal glazing. So it's architectural glass, stained glass, uh, lead lighting. Uh, and uh, that course, that, that's made an amazing transformation as well, sending off cutting tools and glass to students. Um, and they've found there's a lot of different things they can run online, theory subjects and things that they never even thought they could run that way. So that's what they've been doing. And to jewellery, uh, so there's four different jewellery programs we run. Um, the students today, I think, are from the diploma, if I'm correct. 
Uh, and um, so there's, there's sort of normal life for, uh, for the jewelry students in, in, uh, you know, on their workbenches. Um, and there's uh, preparing for the big exhibition they run in Northgate every year, uh, obviously not this year. Um, but, and there's some uh, more equipment, but I'll let them talk more about that because uh, and I'll leave you there. All righty. Um, thanks, Andrew, for giving us that uh, overview. My name is Laura Isles. I'm one of the teachers in the jewellery uh, program. Um, and my students today uh, that are joining us today, Ailing and Beck Harrington, are part of the advanced diploma. So they went through the diploma last year and they're now in their advanced diploma year, which is essentially a second year. Um, you have touched on a few of my points. So essentially we are a, um, a workshop-based uh, course, a hand skills-based course, but our program does offer a variety of theory as well as practical classes. Um, the graduate exhibition that you touched on, Andrew, is at the conclusion of the advanced diploma year, and the auction subject um, is our fundraising subject to be able to put on that exhibition, which is normally held at the Northcote Town Hall, so it's a really big deal. Um, our auction subject um, is, uh, it's a large subject. There's usually two groups that come together. Uh, so we had 19 students this year. Uh, it is essentially a, a really collaborative project where all of the students work on all of the facets um, of managing small business finances um, with the outcome being that they put on a public event, which is our auction. And that's historically been a, um, a, at a physical venue. So when COVID hit us this year, and we could see very clearly that having a large public event with 300 people was not going to be possible, uh, we had to think really quickly um, about how we were going to make this work. Um, I investigated doing using an online platform, which I had seen used for other events. Uh, and I was fortunate enough that um, my students and I had one more face-to-face -face class before we were set into, sent into isolation, where I could um, present with everyone present the idea of this uh, online auction um, and uh, the concept of using Zoom as a classroom. So Melbourne Polytechnic had been really fundamental uh, in um, allowing me to upskill um, to be able to deliver my courses online. Um, the professional development that was offered in uh, Moodle and Zoom and Kaltura gave me the skills to be able to hold online classrooms in Zoom. Um, and my students were really um, able to pick up the concept of a Zoom classroom very quickly. Uh, so once we were finally, after that class, set into isolation, um, we were able to continue the rest of that class online um, using Zoom as our classroom and we use um, a central uh, Google Drive um, shared file location to share on uh, collaborative projects. Um, and it all just went from there. So uh, I, I honestly think that through being agile and fast, taking on the um, PD that the student, that the um, Melbourne Polytechnic provided for us uh, and using those skills um, just allowed us to really actually end up enhancing the student experience I think that having online auction has actually proved to be more in line with um, more in line with modern digital practice, uh, and um, I think that the general um, universal forgiving nature of people in COVID times. Um, was really part of the support that we felt to just be able to grab these new opportunities and just run with them and feel confident that if we did our best, that good things would come from that. 
Um, and good things did come from that. So we had a huge turnout uh, digitally to our online auction, much more than we could ever have hoped to have got at a physical venue. Um, I'll just read some numbers to you. We had 23,500 page views. We had uh, 260 active bidders, which is quite comparable to having a physical venue auction. Um, and we made 150% of our budget. So we were able to bring in um, $11,812.36. Um, all of that money will then go into um, the kitty for the students to be able to spend that money to put on their graduate exhibition at the Northcote Town Hall, which of course will be pushed into next year because we now need to be able to get back into the workshops and allow the students to develop their hand skills so that they have something to show at their graduate exhibition. Um, but through being pushed in the deep end with COVID, we've actually changed this part of our course permanently. It's proved that having an online auction has been um, more tightly in line with the performance criteria for that unit. Um, it's been less unnecessary stress for students where they can really focus their energy into the task at hand and learning the skills that they need to learn. Uh, and we've reached a wider audience. So um, it's really exciting that something that was kind of scary where we just were like, oh, we'll just give this a go with the skills that we've got has actually enhanced our course for the better. Um, I think it'll be interesting to hear from A Ling, who was responsible for uh, the photography and the Photoshop of all of the work that uh, features on our online auction site. That site I have shared in the um, chat box down the bottom for anyone that hasn't seen that site. Um, and then also from Rebecca Harrington, um, or Beck as it should be, um, who was responsible for all of the social media marketing and advertising around um, the event. So with that in mind, I might pass over to perhaps A Ling, if that's okay. So Laura, we do have, uh, Minister, I know that you are needing to head off at 10.30. Mm. Uh, we've probably got a few minutes left. Are you able to stay for a few minutes longer or do you have a hard stop? I'll stay on. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, we really look forward to hearing from Beck and Ailing. So over to you. I'll pass over to you, Ailing, if you like. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ailing. Um, I'm an international student from Taiwan. So uh, I just quick uh, introduce myself. Um, back to Taiwan, I do like uh, around more than three years commercial photography job back to Taiwan. So and this time we got an online auction. So I just think about oh, what can I bring from my uh, working experience. So I just talked to Laura when we have like a before the st stage four. So I talked to her, what can I do? And I list all the like the working plan or time sheet, just like I talk to Laura. Oh, what day I will finish how many pictures and uh, how many Photoshop? Because uh, as I know, if I'm working from home by myself, no one knows my plans. So the first thing is uh, I just go, uh, go through all the schedule and uh, email to Laura, let her know what's my plan. And uh, everyone, all my classmates, they can understand what I'm doing. And uh, after that, I keep emailing Laura to continue um, the conversation to make sure everyone in our class, everyone on the board and understand um, what the process is. So um, I think the very important thing is they trust me and they give me the chance to do this. So this is the um, commercial photographer part. And also I keep telling them how many pictures I done so keep uploading to the Google Drive. So I'm what I'm saying is um, this time, this year, we are very lucky because we have the mature platform for use. So Zoom 
and the Google Drive. And uh, because I'm living like a, a student accommodation, so they offer us all the student or the resident free Wi-Fi. So I don't need to worry about the data. So I have a, a good laptop, good equipment to do this. Well, not a very high level, but basic and uh, allow me to continue all the work. So I think that's very important. Just like uh, I bring my background and uh, all the environment and uh, people and uh, the equipment is right. Yes. I think um, Aileen, definitely what you touched on there about communication being so important when you're not face-to-face, -face, being able to facilitate that um, via email, being able to connect with students visually when you get the opportunity like we are now um, in Zoom meetings. Um, I think also um, a big part of the auction class is being able to um, understand that students have come from um, previously skilled backgrounds and being able to empower them to use those skills for the greater good of their learning, but also the communal experience. Um, but Ailing was um, a dream to have on our team with her skills and her communication, um, for sure. Ailing created some amazing photography, um, which she uh, photoshopped um, hugely professionally to industry professional standards. Um, and in turn, she was able to provide those photo photos to Rebecca Harrington, Beck, um, who was able to use them for marketing for our event. So with that in mind, I might pass over to you, Beck, to talk about your experience. Hi. Um, so for the um, auction, I was running the social media. And um, with that, it came with um, just a bit more pressure than I'd say from last year because there was such a, um, because we needed a lot, we needed the online presence to really um, push us forward with actually reaching um, the amount of people that we needed to. Um, and it was, it was a very interesting experience. I say that in general, um, online communication is not my strong suit in like terms of emails and things like that. So it was really, I think it was quite important and also um, a very good reflection of what's going to happen in um, a professional landscape to really um, to really push me outside of my comfort zone. I'm much more of a um, face-to-face kind of communicator. But and I also I'd like to touch on what Laura mentioned before when it becomes more um, in line with modern practices. I want to start my own jewelry business and I knew from the start that majority of my own marketing would be online so and so I 100% agree that it would it is such a reflection of the um, world we live in 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 terms of um it, in terms of like most art related things where if you don't have an online presence and you really are putting yourself at such a, such a disadvantage so for me to run the social media, to create Facebook events, to, um, to really um, push myself in my own marketing skills was quite a, I think it was a really good experience. It was a really good test of my own background. Um, I studied, uh, did a bachelor in fashion design um, before I studied here. So I have a lot more, um, so I have a lot more um, experience in just kind of like marketing um, in general, because um, I, whenever I approach things, I approach it from like a, a bit more of a commercial um, background. So I have, so it was just a very interesting and really good experience um, to just see how far we could go with just um, through purely through online. Um, I was very apprehensive about just having an online um, auction because I went to last year's auction and I thought the atmosphere was incredible. So it was just in, so I didn't know how people would perceive it. It might be a bit more um, like people might take a bit more of a step back. They might think about it too much. It wouldn't be as impulsive. So I thought we weren't going to make as much, but I'm actually incredibly proud of how well we did. Um, I think that's a reflection of how professional um, 
everyone's approach to it was. It's Ailing's photography. Uh, Julia, who's not here, she did the, she basically ran the website. It and everything from like the graphic design to how everything had um, just come together in such a cohesive way to present it that it doesn't look like a student um, presentation at all. It looks very professional. And I think that contributed a lot. It was a huge amount of teamwork that with some key players, but everyone was so instrumental in what they did. And I think it's like, a, so many people had background skills. No one, most of the people have like a graphic design background or some sort of art backgrounds that they have all been able to use for a, for, to use in a really beneficial way. Yeah. Yeah, Beck, I thanks, think also thanks, um, your ability as the social media controller you were really able to drum up that sense of excitement through the auction um, to be able to emulate an online version of the live event. Because I agree, last year's face-to-face -face, um, auction was fantastic. Like, it was a really fun event to go to. Um, it was also a lot of work and a lot of extra work that wasn't necessarily um, aligned to specific um, performance criteria. And I think that having our online auction this year has been has allowed you all to really focus your skills in on areas that will enhance your practice post-graduation um, and achieve essentially the same uh, result, the same fantastic result. So, yeah, um, it was a Wonderful. pleasure to teach those students. Thank you, Laura, and thank, thank you, you to Ailing and to Beck. Um, it was a pleasure to hear how you've adapted both your teaching and, and your learning. I, I wanted to just throw now to um, to Ms. Taylor and to the Minister if you have any questions or any closing comments. I'm really conscious that we've um, we've kept you a little longer than planned. Um, Nina, do you want to go first? Oh, how did, I was just wondering, how did you get that reach? 23,000 views. It's fantastic. Was it the tagging or was it just the visual? Now, and I'm not just saying that. I thought that is yeah. an awesome effort. It was fantastic. I think it was a combination of um, the multi-pronged approach that Beck and myself took to marketing. Um, yes. Beck did a fantastic job. For anyone that does look over the Melbourne Poly Jewellery Department's Instagram handle, um, all of those auction posts were done by Beck. All of her own wording, um, she was in complete control of that. And I think, Beck, your um, use of appropriate hashtags um, really helped with that reach. We did also have um, a few other women from the marketing um, departments as part of Melbourne Polytechnic. Um, I reached out to them to ask if they would be interested in um, supporting our online auction as part of their reach. Um, and they uh, were more than happy to help. And so as part of that, that's how we managed to get that wider um, reach. Mm. Yeah. Great. So can I just say um, thank you to Ailing and Beck and Laura. You just have given a very, very practical insight for us that we would never get if we had not had this experience with you this morning. And it has opened up a whole lot of um, thoughts that, that I have. Um, but can I say how impressed I am with um, what you've been able to do? I'm incredibly proud of all of you, um, but also just that thing about not being afraid, like just doing an online auction in itself when you've been doing um, people face-to-face -face auctions that's got its own dynamics, then thinking, oh, we're going to do this remotely. And you could only think, oh no, this is just going to be flat. This isn't going to work. You know, you can think of a thousand one negatives, um, and then you start turning around trying to work out positives. But to actually take it from a positive to something quite extraordinary is amazing. So um, thank you for those insights and congratulations and good luck. And I can't wait to hear what Ailing and Beck are thinking of doing in the next couple of years. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. And thank you to Ms. Taylor. Um, we're really proud ourselves of um, our students and our staff. I think, as you can see, this kind of story of, of pivoting 
um, in, in a really difficult time is echoed right across the organisation through trades and human services, creative arts, food and fibre, a whole range of our courses that have um, really made this kind of transformation and I think as um, as Laura said before some of the changes that we made we are making permanent to the way yeah. in which we do our work so something that we wouldn't have dreamed that we would have been able to achieve so quickly um, in normal times we have through a crisis and that's um, that's a testimony to you know the effort and ingenuity of our staff and our students so I want to thank you all for, for joining us and particularly to, to you Minister and to Ms Taylor for for um, listening to our story uh, and to and, and to hearing about the the work and um, the work and efforts of our staff and students. So um, thank you very much. I think at this point I'll close if there's nothing more and wish you all a very good day. Thank you again, everyone. Thank Bye you. Yes. Bye. Bye. See you later. Thank you Bye. Much. Thank Bye. you. Bye.